InDesign Secrets video podcast, episode 8, Placing Images in InDesign CS4. I'm David Blattner. I'm here along with my co-host, Anne-Marie Concepcion. Hi, David, and let's just jump right in, shall we? Sure. Here is a two-page spread in InDesign that's in desperate need for pictures of cute little doggies. <laughs> World's cutest doggies. So to grab some images, I'm just going to go right up to File and choose Place. Now, we're in InDesign CS4, and just as in uh, InDesign CS3, you can select more than one file to place at the same time. Right. So I'm just going to shift-click to grab all of these Hey, if, by right the way, here. if you see that, that black area around the sides, uh, I, I forgot to turn off default folder again. Oh, so right. That's that default folder utility on the Mac that just gives you a lot more functionality mm -hmm. to, the, to the play style box. It has nothing to do with InDesign, so you can ignore that, that dark right. area. But you've, yeah. you've got, you went ahead and selected all of those. And you I selected open, all of them, right? and as in previous versions, you can see that I have nine files loaded into my cursor, Great. and I'm on number nine right now, and I've zoomed in a little bit. Now, what's different in CS4, and what I absolutely love, is what happens when you drag out an image frame with a loaded cursor. So if I drag out an image frame, watch what happens with this frame, that even if I try, you know, so you can see my cursor moving up and down, but the frame remains proportional. Yeah. What's happening is that InDesign refuses to place an image unproportionally. It'll create a frame that automatically makes the picture fill the frame proportionally with nothing cropped out. Yeah. It's great. So that's a wonderful feature. It saves so many steps if you're placing a lot of images. It saves a now, lot of time. Let me move over to the right a bit. Yep. All right. One of my other favorite features is being able to rely on Smart Guides. So as I start dragging, I can see a guideline appear that tells me the, uh, the Smart Guides are telling me when my frame is going to automatically snap to the same width and height as the frame on the left. So yeah. you see the little green arrows up here. Yeah, I love that. The smart guides, um, we talked about that in a previous video cast. It's just so incredibly useful in CS4. Saves a huge amount mm -hmm. of time when you're placing a lot of images. That's right. And uh, now let's say for some reason that I did not want the height of this image to match the height of the image on the left. I want it to be a little bit less. Uh -huh. I want it to be like, a you know, maybe I'm going to fit in two pictures of... Um, Actions. <laughs> Too long and skinny pictures here. Uh -huh. and But the picture itself is kind of vertical. Uh -huh. If I want to override what InDesign is making me do as I'm dragging out this image frame, if I want to override it so that the frame itself is not proportional, I have to hold down the shift key. And that's the secret key to make something unproportional. It kind of goes backwards. Yeah, it is kind of. What we're used to in InDesign, right? Yeah. Normally, you hold down the shift key to make something proportional, but here I'm making it unproportional. But still, InDesign will always place the image proportionally. In fact, what it does is it fits the image to the frame rather than fills the image to the frame. Yeah. So I can select this image and then right-click on it. How did you select that? You just... You oh, sorry, that. I forgot to mention that. I held down the command or the control key to select it. Great. And then I just, you know, command and control click to select it, and then now I'm just doing a normal right click. Mm -hmm. Or and control click with one button mouse. No, I refuse to say that. <laughs> Everybody now has a two button mouse, and the right click, and I'm going to go down so. to fitting uh -huh. and choose, um, I guess I would say. Maybe fill uh, frame. We don't want Let's see what happens. The fill frame portion. Well, right? fill frame, yes. yeah, fill frame basically will we'll fill it, but it's going to fill image the entire will... frame. Yeah, some of the images will, and the, will be uh, right. The uh, the AI sitting behind the InDesign code, the artificial intelligence, uh -huh. will decide what should be cropped out. Well, not <laughs> we wish, but <laughs> <laughs> is that how it works? Right. So now I can do this. I can place another picture right below here, and then again I need to hold down the Shift key, and then watch the Smart Guides. If I want to match the height exactly of the one above it, I just have to sort of drag up and down a bit. Yeah, it's gonna have to be much lower. We're gonna get out of out of alignment there, but you get the idea. Right. You get the idea. Right. There you go. And so on. Now, but let's say that uh, that's a lot of work. What if I wanted to place all nine of these pictures at the same time? No, um, or you like can't do it. one right after the other. There's no way to do it. Oh, you yes, have to do it one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start Let's start over again. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to get rid of all these pictures. You know, the easiest way to get rid of this, the uh, when you have images loaded in your cursor, is what you got to do is you have to shake the cursor up and down ah, to uh -huh. sort of shake them off. No, I, I think you've, oh, you've no. spent too much time with your iPhone, <laughs> with the undo <laughs> feature on the iPhone. There's no shaking exactly. of cursors here in InDesign. Exactly. You know what I what I do is I just press the V key. You know, you just press any key that's a shortcut for a yeah. tool, and it'll clear them all out. Clears it all out. Here, let me go back yeah. to that page here with. Why don't the you go back shortcut. and clean up, clean the house, and yeah, then let's... show us how to do this other really cool feature? Yeah, in, much in much cooler. 
I think if you're adding a bunch of pages and they're all in a grid, you want to use InDesign CS4's grid place feature or contact sheet feature. I have no idea if it has an official name or not, but it basically creates a contact sheet or a grid as you're placing. You know, there's no uh -huh. no graphic frames on this page here, right? We've been making them as we go along. But in this case, if we say file, place, and I'll go ahead and select all of those. Uh, I just did a Command-A or Control-A on Windows. And then say Open. It loads them all into the place cursor, just like we saw before. And now here's the secret hidden key. The <laughs> Hold on, Command and Shift, or Control and Shift on Windows, and the cursor changes. Can you see that? The cursor changes yeah. into kind of a little grid on the cursor. And now if I uh, start dragging you'll see that there's actually a grid happening. Can you see that? Uh, little mm -hmm. dotted lines there. And we can add or remove to the grid by pressing the up arrow and down arrow buttons. Now, I let go of the command shift with my left hand, and or whatever hand you had those down, and now I start pressing the up arrow keys and down arrow keys. And as, you, right. as I press up arrow, you get more rows. As you press right arrow, you get more columns. And you can hold down command and shift again and uh, start uh, adjusting the up and down and left and right arrows to change the gutter in between each of those. So I'm going to go back. I know it seems very, very strange and way too many keyboard shortcuts, but, but once you, know, you get the uh, hand uh, of it... it while you have this showing, I want you to pause for a second because I want to let people know that you don't have to know exactly how many grid spaces you have to have. I run into a lot of people say, look, uh, I have, you know, I, what if I have 11 pictures loaded? How do I make a grid of 11? Uh -huh. Well, you can make a grid of three. Or six, you know, it has to be an even number. Sure. It's going to force you into an even number. But if you have um, too many grid spaces, it's just going to place your images in the ones that it needs. And it's not going to uh, create empty image frames. That's right. And if you have too Good few point. grid spaces, it's just going to place the pictures that will fit. And it will leave you with uh, still some images loaded in your cursor. So yeah. you don't have to worry about, you know, having to know exactly how many grid spaces and fit how many images. It's a really good point. I'm going to hit the down arrow key to go back down to a 3x3 three three grid here, and I'll move the cursor over here right. to place it. And once again, hold on to Command and perfect. Shift while adjusting the up and down arrows to make sure that it fits just the way I wanted to within that group. So we've got a 3x3 three three grid. Let go of the, the, the keyboard, let go of the mouse, and suddenly <laughs> all of the images come in with, in, in one go. Yay, hey, that's, that's good. Crowd, crowd now, applauding. Now notice that they're selected just like Anne-Marie said earlier, uh, all the images come in uh, with fit inside the frame. They're, they're not, right. you know, they're not going to uh, go past the frame boundaries. But in this case, I really want to fill them in the frame. So I'll go back and do uh, Henry's trick of the right click and come down to fitting and say fill frame proportionally. And there we go. That looks much, much better. You can also do that with an object style. Uh, that would be probably preferable. Create an object style that will um, f uh, fill the frame automatically and then just sure, this apply that looks like it has a red eye. There we go. Well, there you go. All right. This, this, this is my favorite picture right there. <laughs> I love that one in the middle. So this All ability right. to add, to create contact sheets and, uh, and fill automatically and, and uh, do, do the, the place proportionally is just uh -huh. a great way to speed up time. And as you said earlier, I could have selected 100 images here. And yes, there's only space for nine of them here, but I could select 100 images off the desktop and it'll do nine of them here. And then I go to the next page and command shift drag out and get another nine of them and then go okay. to the next page, command shift drag out. So and of course every it's, time... not just for, it's just not just for images. You could have loaded 100 PDFs or 100 InDesign documents. Great point, absolutely. Right. Great point. Anything that it can place. Anything that it can place, you can place them in a grid. And it can be a mix. Yep. Mm -hmm. I just think that is an incredible feature, the ability to is. place as a grid. And that's one of the many reasons why I am so excited about InDesign CS4 and why it makes people so much more efficient. So I, you know, I, I hate to keep banging on that gong, but it's really true that CS4 <laughs> is worth upgrading because you get these kinds of, of, uh, of cool features. That's right. So that's it for episode 08. Be sure to check out the show notes on our blog at InDesignSecrets.com. We'd love to hear what you thought of today's videocast. Leave a comment in the notes or email us at info at InDesignSecrets.com. And until we meet again, this is Anne-Marie and David Blattner for InDesign Secrets. <laughs>